Let's shoot some cocktails. I love shooting food. With the right choices, you can take something from looking relatively average to absolutely mouthwatering. And there are a bunch of skills and techniques you use that can apply to a whole range of subjects. Lighting and production design allow you to convey a mood a decade and build a whole world around a subject. So today we're going to shoot five cocktails in completely different styles. Ones that may be perfect for your next client or project. Let's get into it. So for our first shot, we're gonna be doing a very 60s shady motel inspired look. Something that's very popular now for like bistros, small bars, and even some food magazines. For this, we're gonna be focusing on production design and lighting that really invoke a nostalgic vibe. We've got a whole lot of props from our local prop house, and we're complementing this with a Lockwood style background. For the table, we've gone for an orange pleather to give it a very sort of like color contrasty pop. It should look really good with the drink. Now for that classic single shadow coming from the glass, we wanna make sure that only one light is hitting the table. You wanna be careful with the positioning of your lights and if need be, cut any spill or scrims. Now we're gonna be going with Fresnels because they give us this focus beam of light which allows us to get these very directional sharp shadows. We're gonna be using a few to light this scene so it's important that we can shape the light. Having barn doors is gonna make that way easier. Building up the lighting, we'll start with our directional Fresnel from the left. This is doing the heavy lifting, and each of our additional lights are going to support it. To get that long, crisp shadow, we need the light high and moderately far away from the glass. Next, we'll add another Fresnel from the left, shining directly through the drink to give it a warm glow. This works well as the drink has a cloudy consistency. To top it off, we'll add a rim light that just catches the top of the ice, giving it a little bit of a sparkle. Finally, a third Fresnel in the background will light up our panelled wall, allowing us to control the brightness independently and give us a subtle radial gradient. With everything sorted, we should be good to film this shot. For number two, we're gonna be shooting in the style of a contemporary food magazine. Think Bon Appetit or New York Times. To achieve this, we're gonna be using large matte geometric objects, something like a plinth and some background paper, and simple soft light that gives a nice diffusion over the subject in the background. We wanna make sure we're managing reflections on the product itself, but also lighting up the background paper nice and evenly. For this, we're gonna be using a roll of Savage background paper in the color Coral. We're gonna do an initial dry run using a glass just with a piece of paper in it. This is gonna mean that our drink is looking its best for the actual shot because it's gonna melt in about five minutes down here. When we're using background paper in this style, what we're going for is a nice even gradient across the whole background. To do this, we're gonna make use of inverse square law. Basically, the further away a light is from a subject, the more gradual the fall off is gonna be. Science and stuff. So in a practical sense, we need to achieve distance, moving the light further back and up, which is gonna create that even light. The final thing for us to consider is depth of field. When you're doing portrait photo or video outdoors, you're wanting to use depth of field to create as much separation of the subject in the background. But when we're working in macro and in product photography, especially in this style, we wanna keep everything in focus and quite sharp. We're gonna bring our f-stop to about 13, mostly because that's how bright our lights are and that's really our only limitation here. To keep this simple, we're only using two lights on this shot. A Gemini 1x1 lights up our background from above, giving us an even fall off. And on the plinth and drink, we have another 1x1 with a softbox, creating soft shadows and highlights from the side. While we're going to be keeping a lower contrast ratio for this image as a whole, we don't want to entirely wash it out by lighting it from the front. Next up, we're going to be doing a shot that is heavily inspired by sci-fi lighting. So the key elements of this are going to be a black background, some nice backlighting, and a reflection of the product directly under. Production design is really important for how we achieve this look. So under the product itself, we're going to be using a black sheet of Perspex. It's important that it's new and covered with a protective film when you buy it, because you need to make sure it has no scratches and not too much dust if you can avoid it. In addition to this, we're going to be using specialty clear ice. So basically freezing it from the bottom pushes out any of the air and impurities, giving you this really nice clear surface to look through. We got ours from the Bar Society, but you can get it from a local specialist supplier in a lot of areas of the world. Often in food hack videos, you see them using acrylic or plastic ice, which I don't love. It tends to look too perfect and a bit fake for me and detracts from the overall image. Transparent and semi-transparent objects work really well with a bit of backlighting, and that's going to be perfect for this cocktail. We're going to go for a single source that's placed above and behind the subject. This is going to stream through, give a nice glow to the subject, and highlight some of the edges of the glass. 
When backlighting, you can often have problems with lens flares because the light is facing directly towards your camera. To combat this, you're going to want to cut the light using something like a scrim, a floppy, or a matte box on your camera itself. Lighting for this is simple, with a single LED panel above and behind the subject. With the placement, you want to illuminate the glass, but avoid seeing the reflection of the light in the perspex. Now that we've got our wide, we're going to get our rotating close-up. To do this, we're going to be using a Genie Mini 2 and a product turntable. You could also use a Lazy Susan, but this gives us a bit more control. So when you're doing a rotation shot like this, you want to make sure everything is centered up, and this will stop that kind of like left to right movement as it rotates around. We're going to be using a laser level to make sure all the centers of the objects are aligned. For our fourth shot, we're going to be doing a afternoon library type scene. To create this look, we're going to be keeping three things in mind. Soft motivated light, complementary production design, and depth of field. So in designing this set, we made sure our colors weren't clashing, sticking to some very warm, earthy greens and browns. Although we don't have many practical books, green and brown are often found in old libraries, so we can use those colors to really invoke those feelings. To create some texture and make this feel like a real space, we've used a dark wood bench top as our surface, and then we've used crown molding on a piece of MDF that's painted green to act as our back wall. These are gonna feel a bit more real than just flat surfaces. When it comes to lighting the scene, we want to make it feel like it's in a big room near a large window or something like that. So we're going to create some soft diffuse light as our fill. We're going to continue this feeling when we come to light the background, using a piece of polyboard to cut the light. It's going to cast a shadow kind of like the light is coming in through a window and hitting a windowsill. Finally, we're going to be making sure we have some depth of field in this scene. It's going to make it feel like it's a bit more editorial, like it's a real space and that we're not shooting it in the studio. For this shot, we're building light around the practical in the scene. As not to create a hot spot on the lampshade, we dimmed the light and added an LED panel facing the glass to act as the rim light. For our key, we added a panel to the right with a softbox, giving us our main source, and then complemented this with the background light that's cut with a piece of polyboard for the shadow. When doing this, you want to make sure your lighting is consistent in direction. This is going to make it look like the main light is coming from that single source. For shot number five, we're going to be doing something very sunny and outdoorsy. Something you do for a summary ad or post. The key part of this is going to be creating some leaf shadows, giving the illusion that we're in a very sunny plant-filled environment. To get these lush shadows, we're going to be using plastic plants. We want these shadows to be relatively crisp, so once again, we're going to be going for a focused directional light. We want to make sure the distance between the plant and the light is greater than the distance between the plant and the subject. Moving the plant within this range is going to mean we can dial it in and get the look we want. For this, we're just using an Avenger Pelican clamp and a C-stand. In addition to these shadows, we want to create the ambient light that you would find outside from the sun bouncing around a whole lot of objects that gives it sort of a warm ambience to the scene. To do this, we're going to be using a large poly bounce on the right side of the object opposite from where our main light source is coming in. This will just bounce some light back in and fill in a bit of the shadows. Where we can't use a bounce on the background, we're going to use an additional LED panel to shine a bit of light in there and soften out those shadows. Looking at this shot, it's feeling a bit static. So what we're going to do is right before we shoot, we're going to remake it with some fresh ice so we get it as crispy as possible, those nice sharp edges, and top it up with a bit of soda water so we get a little bit of energy and a little bit of movement in the bubbles. For this shot, we're starting with our key from the left with some plants casting shadows across the table. And to balance this, we're using that bounce from the right. We're using some backlighting to illuminate the drink and catch the edge of the glass, and then another Fresnel to cause our background shadows. This is balanced by an LED panel to reduce their harshness a little. If you learned something, let us know in the comments. It really helps out the channel. For more filmmaking and photography tips, subscribe to Syrup Lab or check out the full article on syruplab.com/education. Thanks for watching.